Hey everyone, my name is Evan Thomas. I'm a photographer and a travel video maker. And in today's video, you are going to learn how to balance the new Zhiyun Crane 2. I'm not gonna show you how to set it up. I have another video for that. So if you don't know what comes in the box, you don't know how to get it set up, you don't know the various modes, then check out the other video. Uh, I'll link to it in the description and that way you can become familiar with the crane before you need to balance it. Why do we need to balance the crane? Well, when the crane is properly balanced, its motors are going to need to work less, so you're gonna save battery, but more importantly, you're gonna get a much smoother shot. If the crane is turned on while it's out of balance, it's gonna be vibrating, and when you do move the gimbal around, it's not gonna be able to compensate because the weight is thrown off. So properly balancing the Zeon Crane 2 is very, very important before you start shooting with it. I'm gonna zoom in now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about while I'm balancing it. Before you start balancing your gimbal, you wanna get it shoot ready. And what I mean by that is you wanna have it the same weight as it's gonna be while you're shooting. So you're gonna take the lens cap off. If you're gonna attach a, a lens hood, you're gonna attach that. Make sure the batteries are in, the straps are off. Um, you want the final weight of the camera while you're balancing it. Okay, so there's one thing to remember while balancing, and that is you want to find the center of gravity of the camera because you want to align the center of gravity with all of the points with all of the motors. So it's finding the center of gravity. The center of gravity on a camera like this is generally kind of where the sensor is, so maybe right around here. The longer the lens, obviously, the further out the center of gravity moves. If you have a shorter lens, the center of gravity moves that way. So if I were to try to balance this on my finger right here and I let go, you can see it's gonna fall back. If I were to balance it closer to here, it's a little bit more stable. So just kind of get your hands on the camera and think about where the center of gravity is because that's gonna help you a lot while balancing it because we're gonna align that center of gravity with the motors. So I'm gonna reattach this back on. Okay, so as we reattach this back on, I'm just gonna keep in mind where the center of gravity is, I'm gonna try to align it with this motor. The steps we're going to follow are side motor first, back motor second, and then finally the bottom motor last. So it's going to be one, two, three. Those are the steps you always follow while balancing. Okay, so that looks about right for aligning the center of gravity with this motor. I'll show you from this side. Here's the motor, here's the center of the motor. Imagine a line running down through intersecting with the center of gravity of the camera. So I'm going to tighten the base plate. And now we're going to adjust this motor. So the way you do that is by pointing the camera down. And this is actually already pretty adjusted. But I'm just gonna throw it out of balance so you can see how I would do it anyway. So let's say when I pointed it down, the camera was falling this way. So what that's telling me is that the center of gravity of the camera is too far on this side of this motor. So we need to move the center of gravity back in line with the center of this motor. So I'm gonna move it this way. And you always make micro adjustments. The smallest movement on these gimbals has a big effect. So you only need to move it just barely. And every time I move it, I'm just letting go to see if it's falling back. Okay, so that is perfectly balanced for this motor. So now I'm gonna tighten this. And now we're gonna move on to the back motor. That's step number two, the back motor. So you can see that if I hold this, if I let go, the camera is falling this way. So what is that telling us? That's telling us the center of gravity is too far that way. So we need to move it back this way. So again, micro adjustments. It's a little stiff because this camera's, this gimbal's brand new. Get micro adjustments. Still, I have to move it this way. And that is pretty good for the purpose of this demonstration. I'm not gonna get it perfect in the interest of time. It does take practice uh, to get this down perfect, but I can do this in under 60 seconds now. The first time I tried doing it, I was so frustrated. I almost threw this thing out the window. It took me 20 minutes, half an hour. But just keep practicing, guys, and you'll get it. it. You can do it in under 60 seconds once you know, just once you get the feel for it. And then finally, 
to do the last uh, adjustment, which is on this bottom plate, you hold the gimbal to the side. And again, the camera is falling. I'm going to hold it this way. You can see the camera is falling forward. So I'm trying to get this motor like this. See how it's falling that way? That means I need to move it back this way. And this is the most difficult one because you have to hold it at the same time. So now when I line it up in the middle, it looks like it's working. I'm trying to get this, this motor on the back parallel to the floor. It's kind of hard to see. So that one is adjusted. And now when the gimbal is properly balanced, I should be able to point it in any direction and it will stay in that direction. That's how you know the gimbal is properly balanced. So now when I turn it on by holding the power button down for two seconds or three seconds, it comes to life and it's perfectly balanced. I'm going to put it on the lock mode by pushing down the mode button one time. And you can see no matter which direction I move this gimbal, it's always facing straight. It's locked on the straight. That is a perfectly balanced gimbal. Here's one tip that I always like to share with people. You're going to be uh, using different lenses for your shoots, or at least most people will be, and that's going to throw out the uh, balance. So what you want to do is make note of the little hash marks that are on the side here. You want to make note of these hash marks so that when you change out your lens, you know exactly which hash marks to go to. And I just store those notes in my phone um, in the notes section. So when I'm on set or I'm out traveling and shooting and I need to change my lens, I say, okay, I'm putting on my 10 to 18 wide lens. Uh, these are the hash marks that I need to go to. And I don't even really need to balance it. I just line up little hash marks and that lens is perfectly balanced. So a great tip is once you have this perfectly balanced, make notes of the hash marks in your phone and you'll never really need to balance it again um, because you know exactly the best point for that particular lens or setup. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I respond to every single comment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and please subscribe to see the videos that I make with this New Zealand Crane 2. Um, as well as any more tutorials. Um, I think you'll enjoy the videos that I put out. So please subscribe or leave a comment. Thanks.